Hello and welcome to lecture 19 on WebSockets and Node.js. So I'm going to start with a little introduction um, that motivates uh, the sort of need for, mo for WebSockets. Then I'm going to say a little bit about how WebSockets work, um, sort of in general terms. And then the second half of the lecture is going to be a little bit of an example um, showing how you can write a, a simple WebSocket client in your browser and how then you can write the sort of server-side code um, that will enable you to build a simple chat application um, so that the client can chat to other clients uh, using WebSockets uh, sort of mediated through the server on Node.js. So just a sort of general cautionary note, um, I'm explaining WebSockets in this lecture on um, in the, uh, with uh, explaining how to use them on Node.js. And the reason I'm doing that is, firstly, it's useful. Um, you might be writing a Node.js application that needs a bit of chat functionality or needs to push data around, in which case WebSockets would be a good choice for that. Um, but what you're actually going to be doing for your projects is going to be running uh, WebSockets on AWS. So I think it's helpful to understand how they work in a simple way before you try and get them deploying on Amazon, and that's why I'm introducing them with Node.js. Um, but Bear in mind um, that this sort of the way I'm going to show you um, in this lecture is not the way you're going to be using coursework 2. It'll help you do this stuff on coursework 2. It'll help you do it in other contexts, but it's not um, not the way I'm expecting you to do it on coursework 2, just to get that sort of super clear. Okay, so you're very used to um, HTTP by now, right? We have a client sends a get, post, put, delete, or whatever. The server responds, um, and that's it, yeah? And that's, that works fine, it's, it's great, it's a great way of doing certain kinds of things, like building RESTful uh, web services, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the main limitation of this model um, is it's not bi-directional. Yeah? If the server has some new data, um, it can't initiate a communication with the client, it can't send that new data uh, back to the client. So this is, this is the sort of limitation of HTTP, and this is the limitation that you know, becomes pretty apparent when working with modern web applications. So if you're using Facebook or Gmail, um, you know, these are web applications where there's constant updates from the server as people post new comment, content and send emails and so on and so forth. So somehow the server needs to let the client know that something new is available for it, yeah? So you could sort of do a horrible hack with this. The client could sort of endlessly ping the server every second uh, with an HTTP request with Ajax, um, you know, asking if there's any new data. Um, but that's going to be a lot of network traffic, and there's going to be going to be a lot of uh, browser CPU associated with that as well. Another sort of slightly more efficient solution um, is what's called HTTP long polling. So with HTTP long polling, uh, the client sends a request to the server, um, but instead of sending the response back immediately, the server keeps the connection open and then sends back the response whenever it has new data. So in this way, the server can always let their client has an open connection and can always let the client know when there's new data. Um, and then when the client receives that new information, it immediately sends another HTTP request. It's sometimes called Comet, this way of doing things. Um, I think it used to be used in parts of Facebook. It might still be used in parts of Facebook, even though it's a sort of been largely superseded by WebSockets. So there's a bit of, there's some disadvantages to HTTP long polling, there's like a fair bit of overhead with HTTP, so for every bit of data you've got to, you know, do an open and closing connection, HTTP header, because it's designed to be stateless, so you've got to do that stuff every time you want to send and receive a message. And for low latency applications, there's some limitations there, so browser-based games with HTTP long polling would be just a bit crazy, would make a lot of sense. So it was a kind of hack, um, and now WebSockets are a better way of doing this. Okay, so... Moving on to WebSockets. So WebSockets um, is a way in which you can have bi-directional communication between client and server, and it's done in a implemented generally in a pretty efficient way. So you actually have pretty pretty, pretty near real-time connection between the client and server. As I said, both the client and the server can initiate communication. That's a crucial point, a crucial advantage of WebSockets really. And WebSockets, you know, will enable you to sort of screw things down so you only can talk, so your client can only talk to a single server. But it's also well, it doesn't you know, uh, it's controllable, so you can just make allow your client to access any server at all, or allow your server to be contacted by any client. So you can manage cross-origin communication in a more flexible way without this kind of uh, either you've got cross-origin requests or you haven't kind of thing. Um, so you can allow parties on any domain to communicate with each other. 
So some of you might be familiar with uh, TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, that's like standard low-level sockets where you open a port and listen on the port and then you can send information to and from that port um, to another computer. Um, so WebSockets is as close as, pos as, close as you can get um, to exposing TCP to JavaScript or whatever kind of programming language you're using. Yeah, so, it's, so it sits just on top of TCP, so it's a pretty efficient low-level uh, protocol. Um, yeah, as I said, you can control, you know, who can talk to who um, with WebSockets. And you can also enable multiple services to run on one port and multiple host names on one IP address. So with Sockets, you kind of, t you know, you have one port per communication channel. Um, whereas WebSockets is a bit more flexible with that. So WebSockets are, you know, a bit like HTTP. So they have URLs. We're not just dealing with raw uh, IP addresses here. So we have... Um, WS indicates, so instead of HTTP, which indicates it's an HTTP protocol being used, um, or FTP, or whatever, here we're using WS to indicate it's a WebSocket connection. So if we've got a, this would be a WebSocket URL here, we've got WS, WebSocket, and then, you know, in this case, subdomain, domain, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. And then if you've got a secure WebSocket connection, uh, which you might want, of course, and um, then you've got WSS indicating it's a WebSocket secure connection. Um, there's something as sort of handy and flexible as WebSockets, um, obviously there's lots of applications, so an obvious one if you're doing browser-based email clients, multiplayer online games, chat applications, most of the Hello World WebSocket stuff um, is a chat application, maybe live sports speed, feed, real-time social media streams, Internet of Things, I'm pretty sure that Nest's protocol for kind of communicating between home devices in the cloud is based on WebSockets. Um, and in the context of your coursework two projects, uh, data dashboards, right? You're going to use WebSockets to push new data to the clients when that data becomes available. That's, that's why we need WebSockets rather than, you know, uh, just standard Ajax stuff. A couple of issues that probably aren't going to be issues in your projects, but you should be aware of, um, which are proxy servers and server performance. So WebSockets use HTTP upgrade system to change an HTTP connection into a WebSocket connection. Um, this is usually used for HTTP upgrading to SSL, um, but some so some proxy servers will end up dropping the connection when you try and upgrade. Um, so, you know, when I prepared a lecture on this a while ago, you know, I was trying to, you know, provide a, get a WebSocket connection to that. I think it was within the, from on campus at Middlesex, and then, you know, had this kind of trying to tunnel through the proxy server and it failed because of this proxy server issue. So unlikely, you're unlikely to come across this issue, but if you do, just be aware that it exists, yeah? Um, so, one, so one way to work around this is to use a slightly more general purpose WebSocket library um, that will work with WebSockets, but also has can fall back to HTTP long polling um, when, web, when WebSockets aren't working. Um, so the Socket IO library if you're writing a Node.js application, you might be slightly better off using Socket.io than a raw, than a basic WebSocket implementation. Because Socket.io will use WebSockets when it can, but it's also more flexible, it can sort of fall back onto more basic methods of communication if it needs to. Now, I'm not sure how much of this server performance issue uh, exists within Node.js, but it's probably worth mentioning. Um, so with the standard HTTP, the server doesn't store a list of connections that it has to handle. It just opens the connection, receives the request, sends a response, closes the connection. With WebSockets, con uh, the connections with clients remain open. So you could have like thousands of open connections on your server. So with some kind of server implementations, that could be an issue. Um, you need this kind of high concurrency to check all the different connections for messages and so on and so forth. Obviously you can use multi-threading non-blocking I.O. I suspect the node has a kind of clever event-based architecture to kind of handle this, you know, in, a, in an optimal way. So it's, I don't think this is necessarily a big issue, but something to be aware of if you're using maybe a Java implementation of WebSockets or something like that. Okay, so that's the sort of general introduction motivation for WebSockets. Um, now the next two sections, well, sorry, in this section I'm going to show you how WebSockets work in the browser, and this code is pretty much identical to the code I'm going to be using browser side um, in the client side in the next lecture on WebSockets and AWS. So I'm only going to mention it once. This is the only place it's going to be. So if you need to refer back to it, this is the place to refer back to it. And then the last section in this talk, I'm going to go into how you can, a very simple server implementation that supports chat functionality on WebSockets. So most browsers these days, modern browsers, um, support client side WebSocket functionality. 
So it's very, very easy to build a WebSocket client in a browser. You just create a new instance of the WebSocket class with appropriate URL that it needs to connect to, and then you write functions to handle the WebSocket events. So the WebSocket events are on open when a connection is opened, on message when a message is received, on error when there's some kind of error in the communications. And then to send a message, you've got a couple of handy functions, uh, send and close. So it's very, very simple to get a simple WebSocket client uh, running. So this is my little example. So in this example, I'm, and I'm going to show you how to build a chat application on WebSockets, just to show you how all the functionality works to send and receive messages. Um, and the same is going to be true when it comes to AWS WebSockets. I'll show you how to use a chat application. And then you're going to have to adapt that code, modify it to do what you need to do um, within the context of your data dashboards in Coursework 2. So this is my simple WebSocket chat. So at the top, we've got messages for the server. We type in some message here, click Submit. And then all of the messages that have been received by the server are, echo are echoed down here. So both the messages sent from this client, but also the messages sent from other clients. That's why it's kind of like a chat. So here's my very basic, simple uh, WebSocket client. Um, really just a couple of forms. At the top, we've got a form to send uh, messages to the server. So this is what this bit here. Um, and then we've got a on click. When you click on the submit button, um, it calls send message, um, which uh, is the JavaScript function that I'll tell you in a second. And then the bottom, we've just got a, a sort of some kind of text pane thing, whatever it is. Um, oh, paragraph. Um, so just got a standard paragraph div, and that's holding all the messages that have been received um, by the server, by the by the server, and echo back to the client. Now this is the JavaScript code um, that making all the WebSocket stuff happen. So at the beginning, we just create a new WebSocket instance of the WebSocket class object, whatever it is. Um, and when we create that connection, uh, it'll send off, uh, do the appropriate stuff with the server, negotiate the connection, and then it'll trigger this event here when a connection's been successfully opened by the server. So you might want to do something when a connection's been opened by the server. So in the context of your data dashboards, for example, once you've got a connection with a server, you then might want to send a message requesting the first 100 data points, the latest 100 data points from the server using the WebSocket connection. Then whenever the client receives a message, um, it uh, gets triggers this event here, connection on message, which I'm handling with this function here, um, which has the message as the argument. And here I'm just appending it to the paragraph, the sort of bit at the bottom of the form, bottom of my HTML page getting an error, then I'm just logging out the errors here. And then very simple send message function. So whenever I click submit, it calls this function here. It pulls out the, um, the value of the message here and uses connection.send message to send that message to the server. And then just logs that the message has been sent. So in this uh, Node.js WebSocket example, I'm just sending the, the raw message text. The only difference between this client and the client I'm going to use in the next lecture is that uh, this message text is actually a JavaScript object um, I'm sending um, to my AWS uh, WebSocket server. So, but here it's just a very simple bit of blob of text, basically. Okay, so that's the client side stuff. Um, now, I need, now I'm going to cover the server side code that you need to make web, a web, simple WebSocket chat happen. Yeah. So. We, with most programming languages, um, you can get hold of client and server libraries, for example, because you might want to, for example, have a Java client talking to a Java server. So they've got, you know, client and server libraries um, for Java, for example. And for Node.js, um, there's several server-side WebSocket uh, libraries that you can use, probably also client-side libraries, but I'm only looking at the server-side libraries here. So the couple that I found, just fairly quick searching for this, um, was the WebSocket library here and the WS library here. So I picked um, the WS WebSocket library for this example, the other one's probably perfectly good, um, but the, the WS one, you know, is pretty easy to use and it claims to be blazing fast, you know, built by smart people at MIT and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you've got the, the link to it there, yeah. So here's my very, very basic uh, WebSocket server. So let's look at the first bit of code. So um, we're just, you know, standard stuff, creating a WebSocket thing from our WebSocket uh, library or whatever. And then we create a new WebSocket server it's going to be sitting there, you know, listening on port 8080 for WebSocket connections and handling all that kind of stuff. So this is our instance of the WebSocket server class. Um, and then when that WebSocket server receives a connection, when a client connects to that server, it will trigger this, uh, this event here. 
And what it passes into this event is the details about the client's connection. This WS is the sort of client's connection to the server. That's what the WS object represents. And this client, the client that's connected to the server, when they uh, send a message, um, that'll trigger this WS on event. So what I'm doing up here is settling up a handler for the new connection. So if clients open a new connection, when the client sends a message, it will trigger this uh, function here, which in this case is broadcasting the message to all of the other clients. So that's the thing to remember, the on connection passes the connection details of the client to here, and then we can do whatever we want with WS, we can store it in an array if we wanted, um, but we don't actually need to because the server stores all that stuff for us. Um, and then we just want to set up handlers so we can handle the different events from the client. We could probably do an WS error message, I haven't even looked into that, but something like that. Anyway, we, we have handlers for the client and we allocate them all here. And all we're doing in the handler is broadcasting the message back to the other clients. This is my broadcast thing. So WebSocket server keeps a record of all the clients that are connected. So to work through all of the clients and do something with, that, with the clients, um, all I have to do is do clients, which is an array, so for each. And then I just execute this function. If the client's sort of open, is an open in an open state, then all I'm doing is sending the message here. So when I receive a message from one of the clients, I call broadcast with this message. And that pass that message, uh, then I use client.send to send that message to all of the connected clients. So it's very, very easy to build a chat application um, in um, in Node.js. It's you know that many that many lines of code and the chat application is written on the server side, yeah. So let's do a little demo of that. Um, so here we have, here I've got two clients. Um, so, you know, if we refresh them, if we do, when you use, if you use this code, you're worth, it's worth having a little look. All right, I've got the server running. So yeah, so <laughs> very worth having a little look. So if we refresh it, this is what I was doing a demo for. So we, if the server's not running, we're gonna get an error, right? It tries to connecting to the server and it doesn't have a connection there. So we need to go to our server code here and run the server, obviously. Um, now we can go back to our client um, and then we can send a message. So, you know, hello, you know, I am David, for example. Uh, right, we need to connect, right? So refresh it. So make sure both clients are connected. Uh, then do hello, I am David. I'm set up a handler for this. So tell the message sent. And you can see here, both, the, both clients now have the complete chat record here. Hello, I'm David here and hello, I'm David here. Uh, you know, how are you, whatever. Uh, okay, so how are you? And then, you know, hello, I'm John, whatever. Or hello, I'm Jane. Uh, so, and then, so, hello, I'm Jane. So it's pretty, you know, if it's Jane some, says lots of things, then that appears in both clients. So you can see it's working perfectly. It's very fast, you know, partly because it's running locally. Um, and then the the, Everything that's sent to the server is then echoed back to the client. So then we have two identical sort of sets of messages that are sent here. So pretty good stuff, I think. Okay, so another alternative um, to all this. Uh, so that's the basic WS WebSocket library. If you wanted to have something that's possibly a bit more robust, um, then you might want to go for Socket.io because it'll handle proxy server connections, stuff like that. It's got a very, very easy and nice, simple to use library, Socket.io, I quite like it. Um, so, you know, you might want to, if you're writing something purely on Node.js, not for AWS, for AWS you've got to do something different, as I'll explain in the next lecture. But if you're producing a WebSocket server um, for handling WebSocket uh, connections on Node.js, then probably Socket IO would be worth considering, and you can look at the pros and cons compared to the WS library or one of the other ones. Okay, so this, uh, I split the WebSockets lecture into two. So this is the first one, the WebSockets on Node.js lecture. And then the next lecture is going to be on uh, WebSockets on AWS. And so here, the example, very simple example code I've given you here is um, uploaded there. And there's some basic stuff on WebSockets in general and WebSockets on uh, Node.js. So this lecture has just been a nice short sort of introduction to WebSockets and how you can use them with Node.js. And the next lecture is going to explain how you can use WebSockets with AWS.